All right, violin painting time. This is video number two of my Picasso Cubist unit. And my students are going to be working in the classroom with these kinds of paint, which are called temper cakes. Um, they're great because they're like watercolors because you can add water. But if you paint a lot with a lot of paint and a little bit of water, they can be a lot more opaque, which means not as see-through. So um, I like them, but you can also use watercolor paints um, or you can color yours in with a crayon or a marker. So it's totally up to you what you want to do in terms of color. I'm going to do my video with paint so that I can teach you how to mix colors a little bit. Um, you might notice that I have a few different size brushes. Now, I'm not sure which brushes I'm going to need, but I'm going to start off with the biggest one. So I'm going to start here getting it nice and wet and um, making sure that it's clean. And I, you know, you can also have fun with colors. Depends on what you're using this for. I'm going to go with the more realistic colors because as I showed you on my previous video, the final project is going to be very colorful in the background and I am going to use the more realistic looking colors so that it stands apart from the background. If I do my violin with purples, it's not going to show up as well. So I'm going to start with this like reddish brown color for mine and I'm going to eventually be cutting this out. So. I'm going to do the fingerboard last, so I'm going to go around that, but I'm basically, I'm not overly concerned right now with where I'm putting my color. If I get a little on my fingerboard like that, it's not a big deal because the fingerboard is black, so I already know that it's going to get covered up. So for the purpose of this, I'm just going to kind of go quickly over everything and I'm also going to go over my scroll. Okay? And that brush is a little big so I'm going to go to a little bit of a smaller brush and I'm going to start by thinking about um, where do I want to add other colors and what colors would blend nicely. So when you're using browns, a lot of colors will blend nicely and I'm going to go light brown and dark brown. So this is more of my light brown and I'm going to take some dark brown and maybe I'll use, need a little more water. Now the trick when you're using more than one color is blending. So you want to do this while your colors are wet. So right now this is sitting over here and it's drying as we're, as we're talking and as I'm working. So I need to be mindful of that fact and I'm going to Try to move quickly, but not look like I'm being sloppy. So I'm keeping my direction on my brush up and down. And I am going little by little. Now I haven't added much color to my brush. I'm letting these two colors sort of mix together a little bit. I like the way that looks. Now I can add yellow to this side just to show some different values. So maybe this will be dark medium and light. So I'm thinking about value. I tend to stay away from white. I find white and black to kind of mute your picture and dull the colors. And we still want these colors to be fun and bright and vibrant. So yellow is a good substitute when you're using browns, um, you know, to make an area look lighter. So I'm painting here and I'm letting my colors mix. Now, this is not watercolor paper, so I'm seeing some of these rippling effects in my paper, and that's okay. Like I said, we're going to be cutting this, so I'm not really overly concerned about all the details of the little imperfections. Now, you know, I'm seeing that this is nice and bright, and maybe I want to go over here and add a little more brown just to show a little darkness in this area. And you can see I'm not pressing hard. I am going in one direction. And right here where I'm blending, I'm actually pressing even softer because I don't want to move, remove the colors. I'm not worrying about staying inside the lines too much because I'm going to be cutting this out once it's dry. Do not try to cut out paper that is wet. It will rip instead. Um, let me not forget about my scroll up here. So I'm going to stick with what I got going on over here, dark on this side. Now, you can still see my line in there. 
If you cannot see your line, that means you have too much paint and not enough water. So just be careful about how much paint. You want to always see your line. And I'm just going to get a little bit of that color that I put on first in the middle here to mix. And I'll go down the sides with that. Okay, now, the trouble when you're painting is always that you have to paint this, but now this is still wet. So I need to give this a couple minutes to dry because if I try to paint this black, if this area around it is still wet, the black is going to seep into spots on my violin that I do not want it. So I need to let this dry a little bit. And that's another nice thing about these paints, the temper cakes, they, they dry pretty quickly. So I'm going to start maybe up here and uh, hope that this doesn't for my video. I mean, if I wasn't doing a video, I think I'd, I'd wait a little bit longer, but let's just see how it goes. I might be getting lucky. So with my black, I'm going to paint. Now for the, for the black, it's so dark that you do want to try to stay inside your lines because you just don't want to get confused about where you're cutting and where you're not cutting. And I always outline first just because I feel like it helps me create like these, a nicer edge here. And this is where you would see it happening. If this was too wet, you would see these start to drip out and run into the areas or bleed into the other areas. This might be okay. So the chin rest is black, the fingerboard is black, and I know the tailpiece is black. Side here is a little bit darker. Okay. Now I'm going to just give a little bit of a color in there, maybe some yellow, just so it shows up. A little bit of orange mixed in there. That way you can see it. Uh oh, it's dripping. A good trick um, is to have a, a, a little tissue or something next to you. That way, if anything does seep out where you don't want it, you can just dab and it lifts the color right up, which is awesome. So that was obviously not dry enough for me to be using anything right there. Um, so I'm just gonna dab, don't wipe, dab, 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 um, and let that dry. Once this is all dry, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna cut this out and then I'm going to add my strings when this is dry as well. The strings I'm adding with either a colored pencil or a white crayon. Um, and then we're gonna be cutting it apart and fitting it into a background. So I don't know if I'm gonna make videos on all of that. Um, maybe I can, but for now, this is a great start and I hope that you have fun and enjoy working with um, your paint. Thank you, see you soon.